what's the biggest chokehold in your business or in other words what's the biggest bottleneck in your business a spontaneously come on i need to answer spontaneously that you always get beaten in the market by who by an expert an expert who went all in with his product or service with that skill so if you are mediocre with one two three products or services guess what you're going to get beaten by experts of every single industry who you don't actually even think to challenge the beliefs that you are absolutely believe correct now that's where the magic happens hi so have you seen videos circulating on youtube saying that how we closed hundred thousand dollar deal one million dollar deals etc how we went from zero to ten million dollars etc etc and did you also realize that these all sorts of videos and literally all of them are actually from wealthy nations who have a solid system to do so now what about if I say that I actually did the same, I help business leaders to close $100,000 to all the way up to $1 million. Not only we're living in a technically a developing nation, but also financially broke for the last two years. Then when all the intelligent folks are fleeing the country, I stood my ground and this is my way of fighting for my own country. I help so many business leaders, so many sales forces, to close high value sales amidst a financial crisis in Sri Lanka. So I'm going to share some of the techniques, some of the things that I, some of the approaches that I took so you can make the most of it. So I'm going to share generously. So let's crack on. Number one, the mindset of your team. Now, give me an answer for this question. What's the biggest chokehold in your business? Or in other words, what's the biggest bottleneck in your business? Uh, spontaneously, come on. I need to answer spontaneously. Usual answers are lack of a good sales team, a lack of a good product knowledge, or the bad economy, a bad market, or the clients don't understand you. They understood you, but they don't understand you. The new generation don't understand you. Your workforce is bad, etc., etc. Those are usual answers. Those are bottlenecks, correct. But what's the biggest bottleneck? Did you say you, myself, is the biggest bottleneck? Did you say that? If you said, man, I'm going to congratulate you. Well done. Because that's one of the biggest delusions that a lot of businessmen have because they don't actually see or even understand or accept that I am the biggest bottleneck in my problem. No other bottleneck can be bigger than me. No other problem or the bottleneck that can be bigger than the owner of the business is always connected to you. You have a contribution to the bottleneck or the problems that actually you see in the business. So it's always you. And if you didn't say that's not you, then this is a learning for you. I want you to patiently listen. And this is not something discrediting your effort because I obviously applaud you. You build a business from the scratch. You create a system, you have a clientele and you put all your money, all your energy to develop this. I know you work so hard, so I applaud you. But yet the understanding, the realization of I am the biggest bottleneck in my business, no matter where you are in that business, it's going to not only going to liberate you, but it's going to scale your business to a next level. This is the beginning. So the, one of the problem is that, see, something that I've always seen, we are ready to challenge our beliefs, but not all the beliefs. We don't actually even think to challenge the beliefs that you are absolutely believe. Correct? Now that's where the magic happens. If you can take a step back just for the fun of it and think about the things that you absolutely believe in and challenge them, now that's where your massive growth lies. And that's how when I coach either leaders or sales teams, it's one of the things that I address. There's a mechanism to do that. You need to have a skilled coach, hire a skilled coach, not always me, and find someone and who can, who can actually crack that open and take them in a journey of transformation. Man, that itself is going to do a substantial impact in your business. And the next one is, now I said financial crisis. Now, what usually happen in a crisis? When you say, oh, that's a crisis, meaning that something is happening out of your control. 
out of your control than usual, then it's a crisis, right? So when what happens in especially in Sri Lanka is that that cross a certain threshold for so many people. There is a certain threshold that a lot of people have. They can actually take a beating to a certain level, but it crosses a certain threshold. It actually put them in a whole different zone. They lose their mindset. They lose their whole momentum. They lose their belief and they want to flee. Basically, they want to avoid that pain. So they would leave the country, leave that job, leave that company, sell that company or leave the country. So this is where we also played a huge part. Funny enough, the situation actually set the platform for us to thrive. I'll explain why. Now, when everybody's leaving, what happens is they leave a lot of opportunity for the people who are staying. And what we did was simply capitalize on that. And same time, when you say financial crisis, it's not an empowering line, isn't it? It's a very disempowering line. So we reframed it. We thought this is a new opportunity, a new beginning for the country. It's like wild, wild west. When everything collapsed, it gives the the new the, the rise to the new beginning it's a new it's a novelty again a lot of people are very uncomfortable with it but we we actually have framed it in a way that is actually really advantageous for us so we reframed it we have a huge opportunity this is the time i use a little bit of greek philosophy there as well the obstacle is the way so how can we find massive opportunity in this financial crisis i'm not going to share some some detail i just share something but i can't share the this is a sensitive detail there's this one corporate they were their shares were dropped from whatever to two rupees okay this is the middle of the heat of the financial crisis when everybody's fleeing the government is collapsing president has fled the country in that moment the share market obviously crashed and so did one of the companies and 2 million shares dropped to 2 rupees. So then a group of guys who were advising uh, the stock market, they said, hey, buy these stocks. This is a fantastic opportunity. But hey, guess what? Everybody's uh, scared, right? Everybody's running away and this crisis, right? So they didn't want to buy. And guess what happened? Exactly 12 months fast forward. So 2022 August to 2023 August, this two rupee share went up to 420 plus rupees and two million shares do the math it could have been your financial exit some foreign country invested in that obviously they are making uh, the reward of it so this is the problem right so these are the things that are hundreds of such scenarios happen amidst a financial crisis so as you reframe this, this is a grand opportunity. We were in actually a very good mindset. Obviously, I worked very closely with them. They, I remember they were talking to me. They were keeping very close contact with me every week. And I also put a lot of extra energy and time to them as well because it's a tough time. And we create a real nice positive bubble. We always share inspirational discussions around us. We brought a lot of tactics. At the same time, like I said, the market actually set the platform for us because the entire market was really negative and disempowering and gave us very less competition. So when we go to a table of negotiation, guess what? We were shining like anyone else. So there are certain, certain situations where the market is thriving, it gives different opportunities. Market is crashing, it gives different opportunities. This is one of the things that we capitalize on. So if you sum up everything, you can see mindset goes a very, very long way. How we frame it goes a very long way not just the tactics. So you need to be really carefully and, and seriously focused on what exactly your sales team, your leadership team think about the present situation, the current country that you're living in, the economy, the company that they represent and the product that they sell. What exactly do they believe? And you, you need to really work on it. And third one, obviously, it's a tactical thing. Once the mindset is developed like that, I've shared them some superior negotiation skills. Now, I can, I can say that in any platform because I've tried and tested that across so many industries in one of the most toughest times. Even beyond my expectation, these negotiations work remarkably well. I have superior ground knowledge and I know how Asians think and what beliefs govern them spiritually, socially, and all sorts of uh, the way that people have been uh, uh, upbringing. 
So I know how to penetrate and break those limiting beliefs. And then I coach them some of the top class negotiation, sales and negotiation skills. And guess what? Most of our guys didn't even have to use 30% of it. They closed sales. That's, that's, the, that's the best part of it. So technically, we have some of the core seven killer sales blueprint. Some of the guys only use one or two sales is closed because this is what happened when you have a superior mindset, even a little bit of a tool, a good tool, it's going to go a very long way. But having said that, yes, you need to have tactics, but not before you develop your mindset in the way that I've explained. So like I said, these, these negotiation tactics are coming with the great ground knowledge. There is a way that the, we communicate in South Asia and Southeast Asia. The way that we start a sale and a close a sale, the way that we uh, meet a client and, and govern that meeting. So there are certain certain things happen, different economies, different behaviors. So you need to take that into account. That's one of my expertise that I have, my passion, my lifelong research as well. So I use those and created a, what I call probably the best sales and negotiation program in all of Asia. See, one of the biggest thing that a lot of people miss is that you always get beaten in the market by who? By an expert, an expert who went all in with his product or service, with that skill. You always get beaten and defeated by an expert, by a specialist. So if you are mediocre with one, two, three products or services, guess what? You're going to get beaten by experts of every single industry. So that's one of the biggest reasons why you will not cross that financial bracket, that $1 million and beyond. For example, let's say now, the old examples out there actually, uh, to, to let you know, uh, out there, all these inspirational characters, inspirational business figures that we see, Richard Branson to so many, and you see that they have diversified. So this is why a lot of people say that we got to diversify. But you have forgotten, and a lot of people have forgotten how they have started. They all started with one business, mastering that. And they build that huge network and build that huge wealth and the trust with so many institutions and contacts and suppliers, etc. And they ventured out to the second business. Still, see such, what, what a gamble this is. That Did you know that Richard Branson has failed 20-something businesses? He started 20-something business and closed down. Virgin Cola is one of them. It's a fantastic example to share. Because a Virgin Cola wanted to give a direct battle and fight against um, where well, their competition was Coca-Cola. And Coca-Cola, and that's what they mastered. They have mastered for 100 odd years. Even uh, Mr. Richard himself has written, he has learned an expensive lesson from Coca-Cola, from a champion in the industry. And they got completely beaten out, thrown out of the industry. And Richard Branson never actually returned uh, to the cola industry ever again. What I learned from it was, uh, if you're going to take on the biggest company in the world, make sure that you take, take them on with a much better quality of product than theirs. See, that's the challenge, that's the risk that you have. So if you are a budding entrepreneur and you're thinking you've got to diversify, you got to think again. And first ask yourself, am I a champion? Am I an expert of one subject first? And have I across that at least $10 million. I, would, I should say actually $100 million. I'm being optimistic when I said, I'm just giving a little bit of a, a space for you to, to you know, achieve and, and diversify. $10 million is also not, not that huge mark. But let's at least say $10 million. You can at least think, start thinking of diversifying after that. Below that, I wouldn't suggest, I wouldn't advise. If you disagree, I want you to go on that path and figure out by yourself and you will remember me. Otherwise, use your intelligence and follow through and you're going to thank me later. So just lastly, but not least, see, if we did what we did during possibly the toughest time in the recent history and we could achieve what we achieved and nail sales from $100,000 to $1 million, imagine what we can achieve when the markets are good. That's why we always say, if you do well in winter, you're going to thrive in summer. I'm very excited to see the foresee the future lies for our, for my clients, probably from 10x, probably 20x, probably 100x for some corporates because I know the guys that I coach, the intelligence, the only obstacle that they have was the, the how they frame it, their mindset and knowing a little bit of sales and negotiation tactics. But the reason why I said a little bit, 
that we they only had to use a little bit to close some some of the top process and negotiation that they have actually had to attend and these negotiation actually didn't happen in sri lanka some in the country some in south and east asia some in in the middle east and some uh, as far as united states as well so hope this give you some sort of a mindset shift and some sort of a new perspective and if you think that you're struggling and know that there was a group of guys who actually at the toughest time you used to do this kind of things that you know you can do it it's just that you have a great fantastic mindset and need to know sales and negotiation you need to know how to negotiate and influence someone to do business with you speak to you very soon live with spirit hey this is ramin drandani i'm a business coach corporate leadership coach and i coach sales forces Who are we before the world? Welcome to my channel.